It's me. Quentin. Cheyenne, eight years ago. Well, everyone's accounted for now. Except for a little girl I see by the report here. Nothing was ever found of her. These personal effects were found with your parents' bodies. You being all that's left of the Bodine family, they're your property now. Why not sign up? We can always use another medical officer. I'm not a doctor yet. I haven't finished my medical studies. What about you? is isn't often I can acquire the services of a white man, first in the ways and tongue of the Cheyenne. Forget your English, did you? No, I don't think so. Your horse was killed, of course, but uh, you can have this. Don't let it be said the army isn't thorough. Yes, sir, young man. These are fine specimens. Spare the thoroughbred. Well, you can tell what the flag's here. Fine carry. Strong chest. Well, these are the same stock used by the Pony Express riders. Is that right? Of course, they're fresher. Fresher as the daisies at bay. Now, wait just a minute. I admire a man who understands horse flesh. What are you an iron hawk palavering about? You know, you got the luck of the Irish, young fella. You sure have. Or else you'd be out there stinking up the plains like so many of the rest of them out there. Shio? You'd make a good scout, wouldn't he, Shio? He has much to forget. You know, I treated you straight. Just you be remembering that. He don't talk much, does he? I suppose it'll come back to him. Morgan, never. I hardly recognize. I am known as two persons. This is how I want to be called. For well, sure. Why not? Why not? I'm just glad you still speak English. You had me worried, Morgan. You really did. Two persons.
Remember that? That was taken in Cleveland that winter before we set out. I had two of them made up. I wonder what happened to the other one. White envelope, has it? Who's that? Patricia. You mean our sister's alive? When was the last time you saw her? Three weeks ago. Morgan, why didn't you say anything back at the fort when we could have done something? Damn it, Morgan, we gotta head back and let the army take care of this. I'll find her. You'll find her. Look, she's my sister, too, and she's got a right to come home. Now, I'm going back to that fort and get some help. No. What is the matter with you? No. What the hell with you, Morgan? I said no. <laughs> The attack came at first light. When we heard the bluecoats, Chief Lone Wolf raised the American flag above the lodgepole. At first, they just shot horses. Chief Lone Wolf ran through the camp calling for comp since it was only meant to frighten us and take some prisoners. He even yelled in English, we want to stop. We want peace. But when he saw it was hopeless, he just folded his arms and they rode over him. Fifty horse soldiers. And they saw Iron Hawk and others start to fire back and the women and children ran from the camp. I saw five squaws under a blanket. And when the, the blue coats arrived, they, they ran out to them to show their persons to let them know that they were squaws. But the soldiers shot them. And I saw other squaws whose bodies were cut by bayonets. Shio, the army chief of scouts, he gave a part of one squaw to Sergeant McKendrick. A pouch for his pipe tobacco. They would have killed me, too, only I have the wrong color hair. I don't know if White Antelope is still alive. At least I know I didn't see her dead. But you will understand if I do not choose the army to find her. Made up your mind? You're going to go look for her? Yes. And I'm going with you. You don't know anything. I'm willing to learn if you're willing to teach me. And there's a couple of things I could teach you. You won't make it. I made it before, didn't I? How long have you been up? Long enough to get bored watching you sleep. Uh, frost is barely off the ground. You're ready for supper. Must have been some shot. I learned some pretty fair rifle shooting myself. How many of your tribe got away? Less than before. They may try to join up with others from the Arapaho. Pawnee, Shoshone. Apache, maybe. Sioux. Everything is all mixed up now. Where do you think they're taking Patricia? Probably up there in the high country. At least until the snows come. She'll be what now? 14. Wait till she see San Francisco. She won't believe it. She might not choose to come back. She's not old enough to choose. She's old enough to be taken as a bride.
What's the matter? Settle down. Yeah, them bushwhackers could be out there right now, rustling our beef. So you get a move on. Oh, shut up, Earl. You sound like a damn opera star. Yeah, well, Tank, it ain't every day a man gets shot. Oh, You ain't shot. You fell off your mountain, busted your mandible. Ain't that right, Doc? No, actually, it was the clavicle. The mandible is a jawbone. Ha, oh. <laughs> ha. Uh -huh. You could wind up with a busted mandible yet, Earl. <laughs> How come you're all got up like a damn Indian? Well, my brother was raised by the Indians these past eight years. You don't say. Patches? Cheyenne. Oh, Cheyenne. Well, what you ought to do if you have a mind for showmanship, you could get up on the stage with Eddie Foy and tell your tale of adventure. <laughs> Lucky one, the Patches. I had Apache sneak up behind me. Put a knife on my back, stuck it right in my spine, Doc, right there. And I ain't been able to walk a step ever since. Once more, I can't consort with the ladies. And that's the worst part of it. I don't suppose there's anything you could do about that, is there, Doc? Sure isn't. Uh, I'm afraid of that. Well, I dropped him. I bored that Apache clean through the 44. And that was one buck that departed for the trail of permanent sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for today, boys. I'm beholden to you. That's one I owe you. Doc, that was a hell of a piece of shooting today. I tell you. Some distance, too. Well, actually, the, the truth of the matter was, uh, I was aiming at the other man. <laughs> you was? <laughs> now, listen. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I always say one good turn deserves another. Now, why don't you boys just join up with us as far as Cheyenne? I'll give you full share across the board. What do you think? We are heading into the high country. You going up in them mountains? Nobody goes in them mountains unless they're looking for gold. That's been took already. Any fool knows that. Our sister might still be up there with the Cheyenne. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, in that case, you're going to be needing supplies to see you through the uncertainties. You earn a couple dollars, you can acquire yourself a new rifle. You're going to be needing that. Well. Hmm? Sure. Good. Go,
How long ago was it? About four hours. Hey, you reckon they're still hanging around? What for? Cheyenne? Sure is dusty back there. Then, these friends of yours do this? I know them. How many of them you think? Two came from the front, one from the rear, and one from that side. Hold on now. What you say? You say four did this? <laughs> well, I for one just don't believe it. Hey, over here. Is that McKendrick? We, we could telegraph the army out of Cheyenne. Tell them there's renegades on the loose. I said they got what they came for. They're nowhere near here now. We better head into Cheyenne anyhow. But don't you think we ought to bury these soldiers first? Quentin. There was one army horse that got through. Shod four feet only, it was Shio's horse. You think he led those soldiers into this trap? A man who massacred his own people for $13 a month? No. He's running for his life. We got something more important. Shio's mine. And what about Patricia? I just hope that Ironhawk doesn't find him before I do. Sound since last time, Drew. Company of Chicago is prepared to offer you um, 6.1 cents on the dollar per pound for your feet. Sir, the uh, Atchison and Leavenworth Combine has authorized me to better any offer. 6.2 cents a pound. But is that not an equitable price, sir? 6.3 cents. X.35. This is insulting, Darwin. You're just insulting me and my partners. Six and one half cents. And that's my final offer. Too rich for my blood. Well, we haven't got anything to say to each other, gentlemen. I'll bid you good day. Well, say, Tank, uh, don't you think maybe we ought to reconsider? Just shut up. Just shut up. What price were you going for, Mr. I want 6.75. I'll settle for 6.7. That last offer was only two mils off. Son, we got 150 head. 
If they was to weigh 2,000 pounds apiece, that would be $300 per mill. There's five of us. That's $60 per man per tenth of a cent. After yeah, expenses, of course. Got to acquire a head for figures there, part. Tell that fool sheriff we saved the army expense for burying detail. You boys just take them cattle on down the stockyards and get my price. Mr. Logan, we don't know anything about selling cattle. Got ever confidence in you, son. Ever confidence. You just bring the money right back here. Now let me down out of here, Earl. Come on, give me a hand. Well, where do they go? Oh, well, they know they're done for. You just get them on down there and they'll run in the fence by themselves. You got you don't backside your horse into one of them longhorns. Earl, get the Hey, now listen, tank Shut up. up and help me in there before that beer gets warm. You want to take point and I'll push him from back? I don't think we have to worry about it. He's a shaman. What? Medicine man. Apache. Do you understand him? He's asking where the buffalo have gone. We had six and a half cents practically in our pocket. We don't know. He has to show the world he knows us what for. Earl, you and me just gonna have to part company. Huh? I've tried to learn you everything I know, and you pay me back with stupidity, complaints, that borders on insult. Now, Tank, I didn't mean it that way. Hell, that ain't so bad. Six point one cents? Hell, <laughs> sir, that ain't bad at all. <clears throat> well. I apologize. Gee, you didn't mean that about us part and company and all. Hell, I, I was just funning, you know. Just funning. <laughs> I apologize. I'll consider it. Watch out. You always been a cattle, Mr. Logan? Oh, well, in a manner of speaking, more or less, yeah. Must be a great way to make a living running cattle to the railhead. Oh, yeah. That's nothing compared to what I used to do. What was that? I used to kill people. I didn't understand. That's what I done. That was my business. Killing people? Well, rustlers. You know, like them two you run off. You had big cowman against little cowman, cowman against sheep herder, cowman against farmer, cowman against cow thief. I mean, there had to be a law somewhere, as Lord only knows. Whose side were you on? Oh, I like to think I was on the right side. Lord, I envy you two young men. Here's this great country of ours about to embark on her glory, and I surely wish I could be a part of it, knowing what I know now. <laughs> 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 
Hey, Tag! China, my darling! Hey, China, Get on down, down here, you little dove. Who is that? Look out. Hey, wait. What happened to that bear? Come on over there. You are uh, gonna be another wild bill or something? China, my darling. This poor lad was raised by savage Indians for eight years in the wilderness, and I want to tell you, he is in dire need. <laughs> that true? You raised by savage Indians? Well, the Indian part is true. What about the guy you? <laughs> uh, hello. Ah, uh, yes. Well, brother. <laughs> Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Who gave it to you? My mother. My Indian mother. Do you remember much about your real parents? Oh, sure. I was 12, you know. My mother, she always wore blue dresses. And she had blonde hair. Light blonde that she tied back. And uh, my pa was a big man. At least that's the way he looked to me. And he was always clean shaven and his hair was close cropped. Was he a farmer, a cattleman, or a miner? He was a doctor. Doctor. So sad. You were just like everybody else, weren't you? What do you mean? Heading west. Do you hate the Indians for what they did? The first year I was with the tribe, I thought up all kinds of ways to get back at them. Because my mind was filled with hate. But my new mother, Mona, she cured me of it. She took you as her own. She was shaman to all of the Southern Cheyenne. She showed me how to be one with the tribe, and she taught me about the spirits. But that's all gone now. Do you really want to leave all that behind? I don't know if it's... because we're so different or so much alike. But I want you to love me two persons. Not since last night. Well, yeah, little China girl. Got herself all enamored over with golden yeah. locks. And she worth his paying for it, man. That's <laughs> all right. And I was in love once myself. Fell in love so hard, I fell right down through two floors and wound up in the cellar. <laughs> Cost me two months' wages, but it surely was worth it. Uh. Well, what brings you into Cheyenne, Hank Logan? Besides dead soldiers, of course. Cattle. Cattle. Moses, when did you start wearing your colts in such fashion as that? Like them? It's the dumbest looking thing I ever seen. This ain't no hoorah town no more. And I trust you ain't packing no arms. I ain't gonna let anybody shoot me down in the street either. That'd be the second dumbest thing. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. 
There ain't going to be no discharging of firearms in the city limits, irregardless of the circumstances. All right, Moses. If that's the law, it's for fools and blind men. So be it. Times is a change. Here we are, Moses. Getting worse all the time. No, no, I didn't go. No, no, no. Get him, Margot. Pull up your pants. <laughs> this is so down. Uh, you ought to see Denver. Don't you think you could have gotten more for the beef if you'd driven them all the way to Denver, Mr. Logan? Yeah, it's Chadrack Peltzer's over there now, from what I hear, and I don't intend to run into him, not since he's turned lawman. Bad Chad, they call him. Got his reputation killing six men in a bank holdup. Of course, as it turned out, three of them was innocent bystanders, but that don't make no difference. <laughs> Bad Chad all the same. Deadliest best friend I ever had. Mr. Logan? Can I ask you a personal question? When you're going to get personal, you have to call me Tank. All right, Tank. Can you teach me how to shoot? I'm not a gunman, Doc. I uh, use a scatter gun now and then, but I don't know the first thing about teaching how to shoot a rifle. No, no, I, I mean pistol shooting. Oh, pistol. Well, now you don't want to believe all the stuff you read. The whole country's crawling with punks going around with these dime novel draws. And, you're not aiming to exchange six-gun compliments with somebody, are you? Well, no, sir, no. I, it's just I like to think I have a chance of survival. Survival? In this day and age of miracles? At least Morgan knows how to use a knife. All I have is that sharps. I can hardly lift it. Mm. Well, it don't make no difference. One way or the other. Gun, knife, cannon. White men just don't go out dogging into your heel. We do. You really intend to go out there and find your sister, don't you? Two persons? Aren't you forgetting something? Never mind. that rustler, did you? Yeah, that was a true shot, wasn't it? All right, son. I'm beginning to think that maybe I'm not wasting my time on you. See what you can do with the short stuff here. Up oh, close. Oh, that was your first mistake. <laughs> That's lesson number one. And the object ain't to go spraying lead like you was some dime novel hero. What you want to do is put a couple of pieces of it Right into your adversary's most intimate personality. Something like that. <laughs> Little ostentatious, wouldn't you say? Of course, if you come up against a real gunman, and you can sense his genius, you leave him be. I don't care how much it's gonna humble you. Bend them knees! Oh, it's all these crazy men and young punks running around and spinning their cartridge cases. They're the ones you gotta look out for. Now, if you don't use two hands, I'm gonna beat you with a stick. How'd I do this time, Tank? You're not exactly gonna send shivers up and down the spine of John Wesley Harden, but you done all right. You hit the target twice there, you learned some. You're never gonna be a gunfighter. 
got a brother. You want to look out for him. And you want to go find your sister. Besides, you're a doctor, son. Half ways, anyhow. That makes you a whole lot more important than all us old stove-up gunfighters put together. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, I believe I'm going to allow you to take me in town, buy me a drink before I perish of thirst. China, do you love me? What I mean is, do you like me? Yes, I, I like you. Because the, there's something I've got to know. Yes? We get along pretty good. I think we should talk later. I think we should talk right now, you see? We've been together all the way since yesterday, and, and it's been good, but... You have to go away from here, two persons. I'll see you tonight, all right? What I want to know is, this friend of mine said that, well, you might be charging money for... Actually, I, I didn't believe you. Of course I do. But that doesn't mean I don't like you two persons. China, here. What are you doing? Are you so stupid? Do you wish to humiliate me in front of my people? No, I, I only meant... Just go now. you're looking for, you'll find it in here. Ain't often we get other Chinese. You got no worry about the quality. You can ask around. No one's ever accused Shay of that thick nine. Something like that. I'll take care of the team in the wagon tank. All right. Larry. Come by after a while. You can buy me that drink, sure. You still aiming to be a gunman? No, sir. No, just a damn good shot. <laughs> Thank you. What does he mean about you being a gunman? 
Oh, he was just giving me a few pointers. I mean, heading out after Patricia like this, I need something a little more powerful than my medical kit. Morgan, it's not like I don't know how to handle myself. You ever kill anybody? Of course not. Have you? Yes, but never with a gun. Was it a white man? They were men. in such a state for them the most impractical vehicles ever devised for man. What makes it go? Water! Heat it into steam! Water, you say? Would you please tell me how in the blazes it's going to work in the blessed desert or over the canyons or across the rutted plains? got to be the ugliest looking creature that ever walked God's green earth. <laughs> what do you suppose it is? A camel, sir! The mighty ship of the desert. Oh, allow me, sir. H.H. H. Small. What's that thing good for? <laughs> that camel can do anything a horse can do, except better! Now, what do you say? First you come in here disrupting a peaceable town, for the contraption that makes more noise than a herd of constipated buffalo. <laughs> You barely make it the one mile from the railhead to town, and you move about as fast as frozen molasses, and now you got the gall to stand there and tell these folks that that thing is better than a horse? I do, sir. The Camel Corps was a laughing stock of a Union Army. No horse were worth the salt would be called dead on one of these. True enough, sir. A noble experiment that failed. However, that does not make the Camel slower. Now, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're trying to tell me that that ridiculous thing is faster than my horse? I do, sir. <laughs> I reckon that's only up and up. Well, I've done a little reading about camels, and they're everything Mr. Small says they are. They're extremely fleet on a short distance. I don't know about the long haul. You feel like making a little extra money to send you on your way to find your sister? We really should be on our way. Hey, sport! You there, Shorty. You a betting man? Well, now, I might be. A camel against your horse? <laughs> yeah. Camel against my horse? That's not a bet. That's robbery. <laughs> Mr. Small? Yes, sir. Would you be interested in lending me your magnificent beast to the cause of fattening my pocketbook? Oh, yes, sir. For a reasonable fee. Of course, I have no rider. <laughs> this lad right here rides like the wind, raised in the wilderness by savages. Morgan, we really need the money. Maybe you shouldn't do it, Morgan. I can ride anything, even that. I know that, but look, I saw a troop once right into Fort Tejon, late of the Camel Corps, and those men look green from the ride, I'll tell you. We might be needing that money more than you think. How so? For Patricia. We might have to buy her back. Well, how do I look? Not bad for an Indian.
You really like China, don't you? She likes me. She said as much. She's very nice, I'll give you that. But she's making a fool out of you. I don't feel much like a fool, Quentin. People are laughing behind your back. At least they aren't laughing to my face. It doesn't rankle you that practically every drover in this town has come to know her? You don't know what you are talking about. She is a prostitute. So what? So what? There's a reason for what she has to do, and I can't fault her for it. You'll learn. She has a family, and no man to take care of it. Oh, is that what she told you? She didn't have to. Well, I just hope you don't get hoodwinked into marrying her. <laughs> I am married. I have been for a long time. When did this happen? When I was 16. The old Cheyenne, they don't waste any time, that's for sure. What's her name? In English, little dear. Well, brother, congratulations are in order. Maybe we'll find little dear along with Patricia and we'll take them both back. My wife is dead. What? She was murdered. How? Shio. That's why Shio is mine and he knows it. Morgan, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shifting desert sands? Besides, I've seen this one written a dozen times. Have you? To victory? Naturally. You don't think I make my living from 15 cent peep shows, do you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured as much. Yeah. In addition to which, there isn't a horse within miles of here who hasn't been driven temporarily insane from my steam whistle. What about him? Oh, he's used to it. <laughs> well. What do you say, Indian? What I can't figure is how to get on the damn thing. <laughs> First animal makes the circle of Cheyenne, crosses this here line, and wins the pot. Good luck, gentlemen. On your mark, get set. Thank <laughs> you. 
the course for our arrangement. We got here first, ergo we won. The hell are you say? He never came across alive. But we didn't agree he had to. Only the animals. Moses? That's the way it is agreed. Damn it! I'll take that. And I'll take that. Mr. Small. Yes, sir. Would you care to join me in a victorious libation, sir? I would be honored, sir. The Jake says I'll take longer! That was a great ride, two persons. I guess there's no need to stay around here any longer. I think I'd better get cleaned up. And I want to spend some time with China, so let's leave tomorrow. Great, Morgan. While you're cleaning up, I'll check on the horses and then go to the mercantile store back there for supplies and ammunition. Get you out of here. They've just had a little too much to drink. Come on with me. I'll be all right. Please let go. I don't want you to do this. Maybe I should take the laundry instead or carry the for the railroad. I have some money that you can have. And you can leave with your family. I have no family here. I saw them. I watched you give your grandmother all the money that you had. Our taunt isn't my grandmother. She paid the captain of the clipper ship that brought me here from China. Then I'll pay her back for the passage. You don't understand. Our taunt is going to bring over all my brothers and sisters. We have an agreement. China. Let me go. Please. Hey, boy. I haven't eaten dust for a month. And I'm paying good money for bad whiskey. And I ain't no kind of mood to fool with you. Let's hold it right there. Hold it. Get back. Now, we're all supposed to be gentlemen quietly enjoying ourselves. So let's enjoy ourselves quietly. Y'all hear me? Let's get him out of here before somebody gets killed. Let's take a little step. Let's take a little walk. Let's take a walk. Is it? I'm talking this, Pelicano. Oh, 
Man Shea has information on a white girl. It could be Patricia. Shea? Two of you. Start talking. As if friend had to drop that cannon. Just talk. Not so fast. Not so fast. It's gonna cost you some money. How do we know what you have is worth anything? It's worth what I say it's worth. I understand you're looking for a white girl. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's come to my attention that a shipment of young girls has arrived hereabouts, and among them is a white. Now you take the browns and yellows. Find those without any trouble. But white skin costs, and I hear that's your market. There's a particular one we want. This could be a... We have to look first to be certain. She's been raised by the Indians, I understand. But her skin's white enough. First we see her, then you get your money. You drive a hard bargain. In there. Mm. You open it. to my brother, I'll come back here and I'll kill you myself. You'd be doing me a favor. A big favor. Go on, Paul. Go on.
Shia wasn't mine after all. I called. Uh, she told me she'd never been out with a blacksmith before. At least one like me. So I showed her how to use the billows. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, a jolly good morning to you. You missed all the goings on around here last night. We managed to find a little of our own. I bet you did, too. Tank, we're going to be heading out. Oh, I'm truly sorry to hear that, Doc. Oh, you're going to be wanting this? And you'll be happy to know I didn't dip into it once last night to bail myself out from these Sharpies. Look who's got all the sugar. <laughs> Let me finish this hand now, and I'll give you boys a proper farewell. <laughs> And the first thing you know, she ups and sits down on the hot shoe. And in this day, she wears a good luck brand on the right hind quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Tank Logan. <laughs> Tank Logan. For a walking draft for five hundred dollars in Dodge. Heard about that. This ain't Dodge, is it? Good looking colt you got there. You are worth $500. Alive or dead. Money don't do you no good if you ain't around to spend it. I am taking you back. Son, you kind of got me at a bad time here. You're awful damn young to be feeling St. Peter's hand on your shoulder. You are a cripple who has been up all night drinking. What is more, you are not holding a gun. I am taking it with me. I'm holding a gun on you right under this table. And what you ought to do is turn around and walk out of here while you still got your vigor. You ain't got anything under that table but hot air, old man. During my misspent youth, I might have considered courteously taking you out in the street so as we could avoid any further damages to these here premises. But as you can see in my present condition... Are you all right? I don't know. I've never been shot before. Oh. Oh. I went clean through the bullets and broke. Oh, you better get a doctor. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna faint. Saw it all, Sheriff. The kid was firing first, killed this poor fella, and grazed the arm of that one over there. But he missed Mr. Logan. It's justified killing, Sheriff. I'm willing to testify. Tank, I know you got witnesses that will be favorable to you. I know the punk is asking for it. You and I have both seen his kind many times before. But I warned you about discharging firearms in the city limits. And since you didn't pay no heed to my warning, I want you and your friends out of town by noon today. Or I'm gonna hold you until the circuit judge rides by next month and uh, we'll see who testifies to what. Just get that off of there. I'm going as fast as I can. Not too tight, or you're going to cut off the circulation of the blood. That's right. 
<laughs> we make a great team, don't we? Oh, Morgan. You know, it happened so fast. I, I never thought it would be like that. No one knew it would be like that. Tank did. Aren't you going to follow them? No. Well, they probably know where Patricia is. Yes. Well, why aren't you going to go after her? They let us go this time because they don't know we're after Patricia. Next time, they'll probably kill us. Don't worry about me. I don't want to slow you down. It's better to lag back a day or so and cross their trail behind their scouts. I just want you... Besides... I don't want to go alone anymore. Friends? Yes. Not handy to have around. Are they gonna leave us alone? As long as we don't follow them. I don't intend to do that. All right, there's a line shack up ahead here. We can sleep there tonight, and tomorrow, if he's up to it, we'd best part company. Fever should break by morning. I'll be all right. Just as long as I don't get any infection. Look, Morgan, let me tell you out front, I don't trust any of that Indian medicine. I know what I'm doing, and I need some clear alcohol, some salve. Do you have any? No. Quentin, I've seen them work plenty of times, and I know how to apply it myself. It may not be out of one of your books. <laughs> You gonna pull through there, Doc? If I don't, you hold my brother responsible. <laughs> well, that rag ought to be about done, Earl. Earl, hmm? Earl, would you take the damn rag out of the pot? You know what I have to wet nurse everybody around here? It's because you're a great man, Earl. It's my proudest achievement. I never did hold too much of that Indian medicine, either. Well, somehow they've managed to survive everything but smallpox, and guess where that came from? Oh, I never gave it to any of them, I'll tell you that. You still going to go up in the mountains and find your sister? Yeah, we sure are. After looking at that outfit today? Yeah. Uh -huh. You suit yourself. If it was up to me, I'd just let the Army do it. I hope you can ride tomorrow. Expecting company? Oh, I just couldn't sleep is all. You two got more guts than me going up in them mountains. It's too damn cold at night. I've done it before. Yes, indeed. Must have took you a long time to come across the continent. Where are you from? 
Plymouth, Massachusetts. My father was a whaling man. He took me to sea with him. <laughs> I jumped ship in Havana. That was the worst cabin boy he ever had. So you took to running stolen beef. What stolen beef? Doesn't take much to notice. Ten altered brands and a mixed herd. <laughs> well, Indians do a fair share of stealing, I hear. They have to. There isn't anything left to eat. You got a way of coming right to the point. I like that. Well, I'll tell you what I used to do. I used to steal horses. Steal them, sell them. Steal them again, sell them back to the original owners and get the reward. It was a sweet and convenient way of making a living while it lasted. Of course now, cattle's king. Then all of this you were saying to my brother about you being a famous gunman and all, it was lies? Oh, no, not entirely. I did enjoy a certain uh, reputation in my youth. Used to hire out to these vested interests and they'd pay me to put the fear of God into whole varieties of outlaws. Like them rustlers you were shooting at, for instance. Of course, they got regular sheriffs now. So you shot at people for these vested interests? Oh, didn't shoot at them, son. Shot into them. Of course, I never murdered anybody. Always had due cause. Because they were trying to kill me or else they were intending to. But you killed them, whatever. Sober, I'd admit to it, and drunk, I'd swear to it. I tell you, I bragged about so many killings, I can't remember which one was mine and which was the Lord's. For that matter, neither can anybody else. It don't make no difference. If I had to go in a court of law, that'd be my defense. That, that kid yesterday. Oh. I was staring right into the eyes of pure and deadly genius. He shot you right in the heart and you weren't dead. That's so. I saw your chair jump back. What's your secret? Thunk your knuckle on my chest right there. Had a blacksmith make it up for me. Heavy as sin, though. You wear this all the time? Well, I like to pride myself on wearing it at the right time. You murdered him, Tank. No, he died of sheer stupidity. I'm charging in there, all greedy and anxious to find out my modus operandi. Well, fools rush in, as the poet says. The steel vest isn't fair. Fair. You know nothing about fair, boy. Now look at me, for instance. I run around all these years dodging bullets and what happens to me? Bronco Apache sneaks up, shoves a knife into my back. Any kind of justice in that, would you say? No, sir. But I'll tell you something. I don't regret one minute of it. Damn minute. Shadrach. 
It is. Well, this is a fine fare thee well, ain't it? I come to take you back to Denver. To hang. Damn. Should have stayed at sea. Hang for what? For the bushwhacking of J.J. Coombs. J.J. Coombs! That wasn't me done that. I want you all to come out with your hands in the air. Throw down all your weapons. How many are there of you? Four. No, three. He said old Earl on his way already. All right, don't shoot. We're coming out. I apologize for this. Well, it'll be good to see you again. been tank all right up to now <laughs> it's been a while surely has Shadrach <laughs> tank I'm sorry about this Oh, you ain't half as sorry as I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I heard you killed a hot pistol in Cheyenne yesterday. You still handle that gun all right, huh? Yeah, except <laughs> the difference is I don't make those fast getaways no more. It takes me a half hour to mount up. <laughs> <laughs> heard something also I didn't like it. You was rustling. I find that hard to believe. Well, a man's got to make a living, Chad. Old crippled up gunfighters got to eat, same as anybody else. What's a man going to do? I just sort of naturally drifted into a life of petty crime, you might say. Watched my misfortune. All right, thank you. Sir, I don't see why a man should hang for something he didn't do. Uh, Doc, let me talk to the sheriff private here for a minute, would you? Come on. Get him out. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh... Where we got it here? <laughs> That's a nice piece. Where'd you get it? Ruby, give me that. El Paso, Ruby, remember her? When she a darb? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see what we got up here. Oh, that's it. Damn. You got all my calling cards set. Still wearing that steel vest. Yeah. Except it ain't no match up against a hangman's noose. What do you think the verdict's gonna be? You're gonna swing. I ain't laid eyes on J.J. Coombs in three or four years. I know all the jurymen, and you're going to swing. Yeah. I don't want to go back there. I'd just soon swing out here as go back there, Shad. Here, you think? Do a favor for an old friend? I'm going to think on that. You still taking on apprentices, huh? Oh, them two. I was just using them as shills so that I could sell the cattle. They don't know nothing. A towhead one there has been a captive of the Cheyenne for eight years. The other one's a doc from San Francisco. Brothers. The Bodines. The Army told me about them. Well, then you know they haven't done nothing. <sighs> what do you say, Shad? Glad you're here. I appreciate that part. Can I have a last look at my rifle? Come here, Doc. Listen, I'm going to leave you my chiefest treasure here. This here's a 73 Winchester, 44-40 carbine. Model number's 14731. 
I killed Dick Johnson Jr. with that. Dropped that patchy buck, too. Last long shot I ever had with it. Anyway, I want you to keep it. Go on. This isn't right, Tank. This just isn't right, damn it. You can't just let this happen. Hell, I can't. Got a dozen deputies standing around here saying it can happen. Well, maybe I didn't bushwhack that fella. On the other hand, maybe I did. Don't make no difference. I done enough in my life to hang, well, at least once. Shed, let's get on with the proceedings here. Yeah, don't I get to say some last words? Heck, Tank, I didn't know you wanted any. Oh, I've changed, Shad. When I had to give up women and guns, I turned to drink, and I've become sort of a man of letters. <laughs> now, this might seem a little flowery to you. I wrote it myself. And I want it to be my epitaph. All right? Now that my soul seeks reins and rest beyond that great divide, they planted me here in this lonely stretch that's sunny, free, and wide. Let the cattle rub my tombstone down and coyotes mourn my kin. Let the horses paw and tromp this mound. But pard, don't fence me in. Tank? One hell of a way to start the day, ain't it, Doc? Logan was a great man. 
He'd be the first to admit that we need law and we need order. Sure, it's Iron Hawk? Yes. They're heading into those. Whew. Well, brother, let's ride. <laughs> 